about the, uh, the framing the generation and the founding fathers. You know, 1787 uh, is, a, is a really important year, not just for the United States, but for the Western world, uh, for civilization. Now, people say, well, why, why is that? That's, that's, of course, the year that the Constitution was drafted in Philadelphia. Um, but if you think about what, American, what America's contribution is to civilization, to world history, uh, some people say, well, we were the first democracy. No, that's not true. They weren't the first democracy. Uh, the Greeks, the Swiss, they had democratic systems long before we did. Uh, well, maybe we're the first representative government, a system where the people are elected to represent uh, the, 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 the common people, that you have a, you know, an elected class of uh, representatives. No, well, the British Parliament was a representative system that was in place long before America came, came into being, the United States came into being. Uh, but what we were the first of, what we were undeniably the innovator of, is that we were the first constitutional republic with a written constitution that was enforceable. That it was going to be a constitution that would put boundaries on government. And one of the first questions I asked my students in constitutional law, and by the way, we're going to try to cram two semesters into about a little over an hour here. So, but one of the first questions that I ask my students is, why do you have, you know, what's the purpose of a constitution? Why, why do we even have one? Is it just a statement of grand ideas, of the ideals of a nation? Is it just a um, statement of things that we believe are really important? Is it just a map of how you elect certain uh, agencies, certain entities in the government? No, the purpose of a constitution, the number one purpose of a constitution is that it's a cage. It's a cage in which you put the government. The beast, Leviathan, in Hobbes' term, you refer to God as a monster. And in many ways, it is a beast in multiple senses. You're devilish in some of its impulses, too. Um, but Leviathan referred to government, overpowering government. Now, he actually had uh, a Hobbes referred to, Thomas Hobbes referred to government as Leviathan, a sea monster. But the idea is that government, you create it, and it has a danger of taking away liberties, and it has this immense danger of, uh, of, of hurting the very people that it is supposed to be protecting. And that's, of course, a part of uh, John Locke's uh, writings on, on, uh, in the social contract. And then also Rousseau, of course, takes a different view. And I won't get into all these European philosophers, but the point is government is something that is created. And if you do great harm, or can do great good. And the Constitution is a cage in which you put the beast. If you, and you, you make that Constitution sealable, then we can actually control government. And the framers had such deep distrust uh, for government, and particularly the Congress, when they created three branches of government. The most dangerous branch was to be Congress, the least dangerous branch, so they thought, in the words of Hamilton, was to be the judiciary. Well, we know that the judiciary has to, to you know, the judiciary can do quite a bit of uh, damage to our Constitution if it's not acting in a way to uphold the Constitution and protect it. So um, that's really our greatest contribution. And if you think about it, the way governments define themselves today, suppose a new country breaks off of some old country in Europe, and forms a, an independent uh, country or commonwealth or, or republic, the way they define themselves as a real, live, bona fide country is by having an American-style constitution. Now, that's just one step. Actually, writing out a constitution is not good enough. You actually have to have a culture of constitutionalism and a way of enforcing it, a court that actually enforces it, or some means of forcing, uh, keeping government from breaching the boundaries of the constitution. And uh, uh, for example, the Soviet Union had a great constitution. When you read that thing, it's, if you've never been there, never realized that you know, came from another planet, say, well, this country uh, has everything. Uh, but of course, they had nothing because the constitution was just uh, an empty document. It didn't really reflect the reality of, of, of Soviet uh, life and the political system. Okay, so the, the constitution was first and foremost a, a, an innovation about putting boundaries on government. Now, the other thing.